In quantum physics, objects are depicted as waves of possibility. But there is no mechanism, no material interaction can make these possibilities into actual events of experience. So quantum physics is riddled with this paradox. How is it that whenever a brain looks at objects, brain itself is possibility, the objects are possibility, that's what our materialist version of the world says, everything is made of matter, is possibility. Then how is it that when the brain looks, possibilities become actual events of experience that we call our experience. We become an eye that appears in the brain somehow and that looks at the world and calls those the world of objects. How can it happen? Where does the eye come from? Where does this consciousness come from? So this is a puzzling question of from consciousness point of view because again if you think of consciousness as arising from the brain object and how can objects give you the experience of a subject that's impossible so we get a paradox both ways quantum physics has this problem of how possibilities become actuality just neurophysiological thinking that brain makes consciousness gives us the paradox deepens the paradox even more because how can an object which is clearly object become a subject all of a sudden. So the answer is that consciousness is the ground of being, brain is an object but in the process of quantum measurement consciousness identifies with the brain and therefore brain sees itself as a subject. That's an identity that looks on. It somehow, because of its construction, is able to make a momentary representation of consciousness that is the cause of the I experience. Brain obviously cannot create consciousness, it's just an object, cannot give us the subjective experience. Consciousness creates the brain makes more sense in the sense that consciousness indeed has the causal power because it's not a material interaction, it's an interaction that is outside of material interaction, non-material interaction and we now know that it's a signalless interaction it chooses among the possibilities preferred to it by material possibilities. It chooses among them. It chooses the brain state that sees the other objects. It identifies with the brain state. So it's more proper to say that consciousness creates the brain. So far we have talked about only consciousness and the brain. Yeah. So mind is a riddle because uh, conventionally we think that mind is part of the brain also. In fact we call the total internal experience that we have in conjunction with the brain, we sometimes call it mind. But we have to separate the two. Consciousness is the origin of I experience. It happens in conjunction with the brain and mental objects and physical objects that we see in our awareness of the eye. The physical objects come from the material world, material possibilities, but the mental objects come from similarly a world of mind, mental objects. So we say mind and, mind and uh, material, mind and matter, both exist as possibilities of consciousness. Consciousness makes makes experience by choosing among these possibilities. Yeah, the, let's tackle the dualism first. The usual 
habit that we have is to look at ourselves as a disembodied consciousness looking at the world. The eye that hovers behind the brain and is a separate thing, separate entity that is dual from the world. But this thinking goes nowhere, it's not compatible with science because the question is how does this dual eye interact with the world? It cannot because it's non-material. Non-material cannot interact with the material without a mediator. And where is the mediator? There is no signal that goes from this eye to the world because the energy of the world itself is always a constant. So this has been another puzzle mind-brain problem is a mind-body problem. It is all solved by assuming non-dual. And, and that is precisely what the philosophy of monistic idealism is called. Well, this is the thing. So quantum mechanics is giving us a scientific perspective for looking at consciousness. People have been talking about philosophers, mystics, yeah. the spiritual teachers, they have been talking about consciousness and deeper level of consciousness for millennia. But we haven't gotten anywhere because we cannot quite trust what they are saying. Because we follow their uh, dictum, follow their practices, but we don't go anywhere. We don't get those experiences that you talk about. Some people do, but they are so rare that again the question of trust comes in. How can we believe? Give us something to believe, people say. And now we have science backing it up. All becomes believable because now we can do experiments. We already have done them. And we find that almost everything the mystics have said now can be verified with the quantum understanding and devising experiments that will verify the quantum understanding. We already have done that. So now we can say with, with absolute guarantee, with absolute scientific assurance that look, you've got to believe it because there is data to back this up. It's not just what people are saying, not just their experience. There is actually experimental data that we can provide, that you can look at, that shows that consciousness is non-local. That's the quantum word we use. What it means that it's one, everybody's connected in a succinct portion of reality that we call our unconscious. We cannot experience it directly, but the evidence is clear, it exists. Quantum physics has been around for more than 90 years, can you believe it? And even then, quantum physics from the get-go, from the beginning, is telling us simple recognition that objects are waves of possibility, waves of potentiality, tells us one thing very, very clearly, that there are two domains of reality, not the one domain of space and time that conventional Newtonian science assumes and most scientists believe. Quantum physics clearly says there is a domain of potentiality, the domain of actuality, the domain that we experience, comes from that domain of potentiality. And that domain for potential, it is completely distinct from this domain, where there is signals, there is finiteness of speed. In that domain, everything is instantly connected. No speed is needed because it's all just one thing. And that one thing, we have to name something, we call it consciousness. Why? Because that's the origin of the self, the I that we experience. So it's naturally, we call it consciousness. So in this way, uh, Quantum physics is telling us something uh, that uh, is dividing us today totally. We believe that science and spirituality are two different things and the two factions cannot talk to each other anymore. Quantum physics says, but look, both are true because science is telling us the same thing as the uh, religion and spiritual tradition is telling us. There are two domains of reality. It's a mistake to think only half as real. Religious traditions emphasize the transcendent, the domain of potentiality as real. Scientists emphasize the immanent world, the world of place and time as real. But both are real. Both are real because both are essential for our understanding of what is actually going on. Yeah.
So uh, there's two realms of reality. If we live in just one realm where we are completely aware that there is an I and you are separate from me, we can process things, but process things only in a limited way. Because in this reality, everything is just one thing. You cannot be two things. You cannot be in two different places at once. And you cannot have two different thoughts at once. It's just one thought at a time, one experiment at a time. But the domain of potentiality is totally different. There we can have many thoughts at the same time. What does it mean? Thoughts begin with a possibility. In possibility, thoughts can have many, many meanings. Out of that we choose a particular meaning, a particular thought. So in quantum thinking, we are able to process many, many ideas all at the same time and pick a particular gestalt all at the same time to make a coherent creative insight that could not possibly be done by linearly, one by one, testing out the thoughts that we have. So quantum thinking is much, much more powerful than the traditional so-called scientific step-by-step -step yes. thinking. Yeah, this is why we need activism. <laughs> I mean, I sympathize with you because indeed, um, you know, it's hard, it's hard to give up the belief that what you see is what you get. But um, isn't it nice to uh, have uh, that even what we don't see, we sometimes get? Isn't that, would, the world obviously would be nicer if that were true. And quantum physics is saying, yes, believe it. Anything is possible. Anything is possible because it is true that we can get more than what we see. And that's wonderful. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. For You're your time. so welcome. Thank you.